OCN, Word of God to the World. Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. What a wonderful privilege and opportunity to be in your presence today. Oh, the Lord is good. And hallelujah, look what I have. I brought a little gift. Hallelujah. But I want you to know there's a gift that Jesus has for you today. And that is the gift of eternal salvation. And within salvation, he's already provided for each and every one of us safety, soundness, preservation, healing, and deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. But he's just waiting on you. You have to open up and ask him to come into your hearts and become your Lord and your Savior. We will complete that before the broadcast is completed for today. However, I'm talking or speaking to you today about how to maintain peace. What? Yes, peace, the peace of God. You know, we've heard and hear all the time according to, you know, we need peace in the world and, you know, and so on and so forth. This is true. However, in order to really have the true peace, that the Lord Jesus Christ gives, you need to be introduced and seek the God who is the God of all peace. Hallelujah. He is the God of all peace and comfort, family. Oh, if I didn't know that, oh my goodness, it, it would not be a good thing. But I tell you what, if I could bottle up peace and sell it, I'd be a billionaire because everyone, the world is looking and seeking for peace. They're trying to find peace within uh, uh, illicit uh, 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 sexual activity and drugs and, and so on and so forth. You're not going to find it in that. You have to know and meet the God who is the God of all peace and comfort. So let's look to the word of God. We want to find out. Once I, uh, I find out and I receive Jesus, and that's a package of a part of what he's provided for me, is the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And we need that peace. Oh, my goodness. Over in Isaiah, I'm reading from the New King James, uh, chapter number 9, looking at verse number 6. The word tells us, for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father the prince hallelujah this is what we're talking about the prince of peace oh my goodness hallelujah so you're only going to find this peace to receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And it's free. All you have to do is once you receive Jesus, that comes with your package. Hallelujah. Peace. And what is peace? I'm glad you asked. Peace is a state of tranquility. Oh, my goodness. Like I said, you can have a true peace that you can lay down at night, lay your little head on your pillow, and go to sleep and be in peace. Hallelujah. 
Let's look now to Philippians over in Philippians uh, chapter number four. It's so important to know about the peace and that he is the God of all peace and comfort. Oh, it's awesome to know that, that, that you don't just have to depend on you, but he's there to help us. Glory to God. Over in Philippians 4 and looking at verse number 6, it tells us to be anxious for nothing or be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer, you make your request made known unto God. What happens then? In verse 7, it says, and the peace, hallelujah, of God that passeth all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. His peace. Over in Isaiah, we want to look at Isaiah and see once you, get, you receive Jesus and you start getting into the word of God, you'll find these things out. And I tell you, it's a wonderful thing to know that he's already made these provisions for us. All we have to do is receive it. It becomes ours. Hallelujah. Over in uh, Isaiah 26, and we want to look at verse number three. And it says, you will keep him in perfect or complete peace, hallelujah, whose mind, this mind is stayed on the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we have to begin to get in the word of God. We need to renew these minds because the mind will drive you off to the face of earth. <laughs> The mind, if you don't know what God's word says, you don't know it, realize where you're going or coming. But that's why he says over in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Because the enemy wants to play tricks with our minds. He wants to give you negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions to get you to meditating and dwelling and thinking on these things. And all the time he causes you to think that you're thinking that and behind it, it's all about him. He's the one. The devil is a lie. Now, once knowing about this peace that God gives us, we have to believe what the word of God says. The word, when it comes to faith in the word of God, one has to turn off sense knowledge evidence. Well, what am I saying, Dr. Jones? You have to be not moved by what our five senses, what we can see, feel, hear, touch, or taste. When it comes to the word of God, it's motivated by what I believe and coupled with what I confess based on the word of God. And then God said, I will confirm my word in your life with the signs following. That's the kind of God that we serve for those of us who have received him. And I will give an opportunity later on. Now, when it comes to, like I said, when it comes to faith in the word of God, you have to turn off the five senses, in other words. And um, one other thing, one must say what God's word says. Because once I realize that he is a God of his word, he's only going to do what his word says he will do. And that, that we will confess in line with what his word says. Then he says, I will. Not maybe, but I will confirm my word with the signs following. You can be assured because that's the kind of God that we serve. He's an awesome God family. He loves us so much. He's given his son, Jesus, not his only son, not, not one of them, but his only son. He became that living sacrifice, official lamb on the behalf of mankind to give us an opportunity to come into his family Woo, for a time such as this. My, 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 my. You know we need to know that we have a Savior. You, need, you know that we need to have someone we can depend on. You need to know that we have a God that we can trust in. You need to know that he has your back. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. He has our back. He's concerned, family. He's concerned about every area, every aspect of our lives to the degree that we invite him in. We have to understand that he's just, he's, he's a gentleman. 
He's not going to force his way into our lives. But when we say, Father, I need your help. I don't know what move to make. I don't know what step to take. I need your direction. I need your wisdom in my life right now. Oh, he's just waiting. <laughs> he's waiting. Hey, you ask him, it's on. Hallelujah. Because he's a faithful God. He will do it, and he will bring it to pass. Oh, he's so wonderful. Oh, my goodness. You know, we at this time in, in the world, there's so much devastation and, and, and just heartbreak and, and just, you know, breaking issues and, and situations and circumstances in, the li in our lives at this time. People of out of, out of work who just had that horrible uh, uh, tornado in Kentucky. And oh my God, and people have lost homes and, and, and everything, all their belongings and everything. I tell you, God has your back. Once you receive him as Lord and Savior, he is concerned, as I said, he's got you. He wants to take care of you. And in spite of what's going on in the world, he says over in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there is no temptation as such as common to man that God will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able. But also with that temptation, test or trial, always make a way to escape. And that escape route is through his word, the word of God. Because we do not have the Lord Jesus to see like we can see one another in the flesh. But that's why we have to know what his word says. Then give him his word. Read that word to him. Father, your word says this, that, and the other. But see, if you do not know what the word says, it doesn't limit God. It limits you. And so once you receive him, that's why it's our responsibility to get in this word and learn how to be the doer of his word and just not the hearer only. See, nothing in the word of God is just going to happen by osmosis. You have to apply yourself. Just like going to physical school, you have to put forth the effort. You're not going to start off in college. You need to, you'll start off in grammar school or, 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 or elementary school, middle school. Uh, uh, junior high school, then you, you go on from there. So the things of the word of God is just that, just like that. You start off in the elementary things of the word of God, and then you grow, you grow. And every day, every, every month, you should be able to look and see, oh, I'm growing. I'm growing in the word of God. I'm learning the scriptures of what God's word says. Oh, I love it. And he says over in Philippians 4 and 13, you can do all, A-L-L, -L, things through Christ who strengthens us. That's what we're talking about. We can do this. We can, we can walk the walk. We can talk the talk. Oh, I tell you, it's so exciting. It's a wonderful, it's exciting life, and especially in this day and time to know that we have this trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He reminds us or tells us over in his word in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. He tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and soul and lean not to your own understanding. He says in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. That's the kind of God we serve. So we're not a failure creature. He's not made any of his children a failure creature. The only way that one can fail is by not allowing or not giving God's word first place in our lives. That's the difference. The word reminds us also. Over in 2 Peter, the uh, first chapter, verse number 3, it says that he's given, God has given us all, A-L-L, -L, things that pertain to life, L-I-F-E, and godliness. He's given us all the tools, family. He's given us everything to work with. That's why we can do this and know that because of what his word says that he has our back. You know, I know that there are those out there today and, and it's Christmas time and um, it's getting closer. And as I had stated, some people have nowhere to live. They have no jobs. They've lost loved ones. And it's, it's a very trying time. 
But God says over in his word, over in 2 Corinthians in chapter number one, and this is so important to know, starting with verse number two, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Oh, isn't that wonderful to know? Who comforts all of us in our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort wherewith he comforts us through his word. And that's important to know. That's important to know. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always so we can hold on to that. Yes, it's not easy to, to, to lose a loved one, not at all. But to know that based on the word of God, that loved one having received the Jesus just like you, that that's our peace through the word of God. That's our guarantee, according to his word, that we'll get to see our loved one once again. But that's why we have to have the word of God. And because the word of God gives you peace, hallelujah. The word of God gives you comfort. The word of God strengthens you. Oh, we are so blessed. Our Father has provided, as I had stated, all things according to what his word says that pertain to life and godliness. He's given us every tool, everything to work with. But once we receive him, it's our responsibility to get into the word of God. Get the word of God off the pages. Well, what do you mean get them off the pages? I'm glad you asked. That means commit the word of God to our remembrance. Well, Dr. Jones, it's hard for me to remember. No, it's not. You can do all things through Christ. <laughs> Who strengthens you? You can do this. You can take one word of a scripture and learn that one word. Go over it and go over it. Before you know it, you got that. Then you pick up the next word. Before you realize it, you done learn the whole scripture. Hallelujah. So you can do it. It's not about age. It's about taking the time and committing yourself to doing it. And we can do it and be totally and completely successful. Oh, peace, he says. The peace of God. Over in uh, the Gospel of John in 14, verse 27, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. He says he, that he's given us his peace, his peace. Oh, like I said, if I, we could bottle up his peace and sell it, hallelujah. We definitely be billionaires, my, my, my. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, and let not your heart be troubled, and let it not be afraid, because God has not given any of his children a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Oh, family, we are so blessed. We are so fortunate that our Father, like I said, he's concerned about every area, but every aspect of our lives. He's made all the provisions we need. All we have to do is get in here and find out what he has already promised us. It's already available to us. All we have to do is receive it. Hallelujah. And understand that it's there again, it's all by faith. That's why it's so important that we be taught the word of God. The word reminds us over in um, Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you have to hear it over and over and over and over. We're not going to just get it and whoop, there it is in one day. It's a time and it's a process, but it's a good thing. Oh, my gosh, it's a good thing. You know, like here we are at the end of this year, my goodness, 20 and 21. Now, you need to look back and see where you were when you started with this 2021. Of course, we know we've had the COVID that's going on now, this other uh, variant. But we have the victory. That's the main thing. I need to realize that 
I don't, I'm not comfortable and I'm, I'm, I don't want to be where I've been. I want to do better. And the thing about it is the ball is in your park. You can do it. You can make it happen. Just like I said, because God has not made any of us that have received him as Lord and Savior a failure creature. The only way one can fail is by not allowing or giving God's word first place in our lives. I tell you, it's a wonderful life to live. Oh, it is so exciting every single day to know that I have the strength of God. I have the peace of God. Oh, he said that he would supply your every need. And so if I'm in need of a job, I can just ask, Father, I thank you that I believe according to your word that you said you would supply my every need. So this is what I need now at this time is a job. I thank you that you've already opened up the door for me. Oh, family, it's awesome. You can trust him. And then he has nothing but the best because he's given his best. Hallelujah. And you need to know that you're not an afterthought in the heart of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are valuable and very precious and special because you have been purchased by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's so important to know that. Yes, it is. It's so awesome to know that. Oh, I tell you. Oh, glory. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the reason for all seasons. Glory to God. He's the reason for every time or every situation or circumstance we find ourselves confronted with. He's right there. He's ready to assist us. But we have to do things God's way and not our way. That's what makes the difference. We get in the, in the situation and we mess it up. <laughs> Then you say, Father, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? <laughs> but he's so loving. He's so patient. <laughs> he's so long-suffering. He's so gentle. <laughs> he wants you to get it right. <laughs> so when you recognize, oh, well, I missed it. I'm sorry, Daddy. <laughs> I ask you to forgive me. You receive his forgiveness. Let the past go. Move forward. It's a new beginnings and a fresh start. It's an exciting life. Oh, my gosh, it's so exciting, God, I tell you. That's why I just love him. I just keep on falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Oh, I tell you, it's a wonderful thing just to wake up and say, Oh, Father, good morning. How are you? <laughs> Not good God this morning. <laughs> It makes a difference, family. And then the word reminds us, he said, that the joy, his joy is our strength. Oh, my God, his joy is our strength. And he reminds us that over in the first epistle of John, in chapter number four, verse number four, and it says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The greater one. Oh, my gosh, it's dwelling on the inside of his fa a family. So that's why we can't lose with the stuff we use of the word of God. It's dynamite, explosive power going to happen up on the works of darkness, Satan, and demons. That's right. You have to tell that stupid, dumb spirit because he is the thief, as the word tells us, because we are in the spiritual warfare, and the enemy doesn't play fair. The word reminds us over in John 10 and 10, he is the thief. He's the one that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his game. He's trying to get us off of focus to what God's word says. But we can't allow him that pleasure. We have to say, oh, no, devil, I see what you thought you were trying to do. I'm not accepting it. And that's what we all have to do. You have to read him the right act according to what God's word says. But there again, if you don't know the word, what it says, it's not limiting the father, it's limiting you. So you have to be the doer of his word and just not the hearers only. And it's, you know, as, as, as I had stated, it's a constant, it's an everyday practice, it's an everyday studying in the word. It's every day taking time to pray and, and to worship the Father 
and not just all the time, Daddy, I need this, not this, that, and the other. No, you take that time and you give him the praise, you give him the glory, and you give him the honor. Just want to tell him how much you love him and thank him for what he has done for you in your life and in your family's life. Oh, I tell you, he's awesome. He's an awesome God, and he's worthy to be praised all the time. Oh, my goodness, yes, he's worthy. It's all about, I always say it's all about you, Jesus, because if it's not about Jesus in all actuality, it's not about nothing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it makes all the difference. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. That's why I get so excited. Ah, I get so excited. It's good. The word reminds us over in Psalms um, 34 and 8. He tells us to taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Hallelujah. That's why you got to trust in him. Trust what his word says because that's what he's going to That's the only thing that he's going to confirm in our lives is what his word says. Hallelujah. There again. So when you give him his word back, it's a guarantee. It's a done deal. I love his M.O. He's worthy. He's awesome. He's all of that. Glory to God. So the peace, the peace of God that passeth all understanding, it's just nothing like it. Oh, walking in his peace. No matter what has gone on through the day, but to be able, there again, as I had stated a little earlier, to lay your head down at night on your pillow, and regardless to all the situation and circumstances that had come against us, and just to go to sleep and be in his peace. Oh, my God. It is an awesome thing. Over in uh, Psalms, let me see. Over in Psalms here, and we're still talking about the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And um, you have to to, uh, like I said, walk in it on an everyday basis. The enemy is trying to, he comes to try to steal the peace of God from you, but you can't afford to let him have it. No. And another thing to know that even when you lay down at night over in Psalms, in number, chapter number four, and looking at number eight, it says, I will both lie down in what? Peace. Oh, there it is. Peace, the peace of God and sleep. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. Oh, you're talking about mm -mm, you need to lie down in God's peace. You don't have to worry about taking a tranquilizer. You don't have to take the dope because uh, his word says that I can lay down and be in peace. Hallelujah. Ooh, what a relief it is. Oh, how satisfying it is. Oh, boy, I tell you, I always say take a dose of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and enter into that peace, his peace, this peace that passes all understanding. And that is so comforting, so encouraging to know that he gives us his supernatural peace, the peace of God. Oh, family, it's so awesome. So I, I, I present this to you. He's giving you the gift, these, the gift of eternal salvation. He's not making anyone or trying to beat you down to make you to receive, but he makes it available. And all you have to do once hearing the word of God, hearing the truth. You know, I might not understand what the word of God is saying, but there's something about his word that brings truth. And that we can identify. And when I can identify with that truth, then that opens me up to wanting to say, oh, Lord Jesus, I want you for my own. And he's available. He's available today. He's available any time, any place. It doesn't have to be a special time or a special day. But he says that if you'll just open up, hallelujah, open up. 
I'm going to pray this prayer, and you can just repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, your word says, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for taking spiritual torment for my sins. I thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties. Oh, I thank you. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus. So give him the praise. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. And I say, hi, brother. Hi, sister. Welcome to the family of God. You have made the best decision, the best choice you could ever make. It's nothing like knowing that I belong. I'm in the family, the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're just not on your own, but he's there. You, he has, you have asked him to come in. Now he is your Lord and he's your Savior. And, oh, you have just, ooh, it's awesome. So you got to get busy, family. Got to get busy in the word of God. Hallelujah. You need power in your life? The Holy Spirit is available. All you have to do is just ask, just like you asked when you received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit is the power source of God, and we need that supernatural power. He says all you have to do is just ask. And once you ask, you shall receive. Then all you have to do is open up your mouth and begin to speak. And the Holy Spirit will give you the words to speak. It's a prayer language. Awesome. And you begin to use it every single day. And that's the way you can build yourself up on the inside. Well, family, I just want to thank you for taking the time to tune in to uh, Creations by In Him this day. It's been my pleasure to serve you today. I have enjoyed it. And I just want to let you know that I love you. I want you to know, I want you to have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. Always remember that Jesus is the reason for all your seasons. Hallelujah. I want you to stay safe. Drink your water, wear your mask. And we will see you for the next time. I love you. This is Dr. Jones. I'm signing off for today. And we will see you for the next time. Bye for now. <laughs>